questions, Question Royale, the, uh, the Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Today, we honor the victims of the Polytechnic shooting, and we want to end violence against women. We also think about the people who cannot eat this Christmas. We have stories of children who are writing letters to Santa Claus not to ask for presents, but to ask for food. And 25 percent of young Quebecers have told pollsters that they cannot eat because of the cost. The Prime Minister, did he force his senators to keep the tax on food for Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, today we honour the memory of 14 young women who were assassinated at Polytechnic School in Montreal simply because they were women. We honour their memory and we continue to fight against inequality and gender-based violence. We must all continue to pursue reform against assault-style weapons, including the fight against femicide. Tragedies like the one at Polytechnique should never occur again. <laughs> of the official opposition. Sir Prime Minister. This Prime Minister does not, is not worth the cost of housing. He's doubled the cost of housing since he came to power. But yesterday, at the Senate, one of the senators asked the Speaker of the President of the Government Agency for Housing if there was a plan to add 4.5 million necessary units to make for affordable housing? And the answer was no. I'm not the one saying this. It's the president of the Federal Agency for Housing. When will the Prime Minister look at my documentary to find a common sense plan to eliminate tax and red tape to build houses? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, Canadians see very clearly the hashtags and YouTube uh, trends from the Conservative Party. They have never seen a social program that he did not want to get rid of. And there would have been no funding during the pandemic. There would be, had been nothing to st stabilize grocery prices. Uh, there nothing to fight against climate change under them. They think that Canadians will be fooled, but we know who this leader is, truly. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. What Canadians know is that the Prime Minister has doubled housing costs, doubled the rent, doubled mortgage payments, doubled the needed down payment. After eight years, Mr. Speaker, our housing costs have worsened at a greater rate than all but one OECD country. And yesterday, a senator asked the head of the Prime Minister's own housing agency if there is a federal government plan to eliminate the 3.5 million home deficit that we have in Canada? The answer? No. It's not me saying that. It's his own housing agency. So given that he doesn't have a plan, why doesn't he watch the common sense housing do uh, uh, do documentary I put forward so that he can see a common sense plan to cut bureaucracy and build homes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is shameful that the Conservative leader is exploiting the very real anxieties and fears of Canadians for clicks and views. This leader continues to demean co-ops as Soviet-style housing. He called the Niagara family's home a shack, and he keeps using homeless people as props. A responsible leader acts on the concerns of Canadians instead of exploiting them for political gain just so he can get his 15 minutes. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. What is shameful is that this Prime Minister is causing homelessness in this country. He's caused the doubling of the number of people eating at a food bank in Toronto. One uh, single mother in Sydney said, well, this month I had to choose between eating and having heat. My kids are getting fed, but my house is 
freezing, end quote. The Prime Minister's solution is to quadruple the carbon tax on that single mother and on seniors. Mr. Speaker, we have a common sense Conservative bill to take the carbon tax off farmers and food. Why did the Prime Minister manipulate and intimidate Liberal senators into blocking that bill? Why does he want to tax food right before Christmas? <laughs> The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, after all the intimidation and threats from the Conservatives towards parliamentarians on 234, it turns out the only farming the Conservative Party cares about is rage farming. Because all of this was just an attempt to fundraise off of the backs of farmers. Time and time again, the Conservative leader has shown that he wants to take Canadians back to the Stone Age instead of helping them get ahead. On this side of the House, the Liberal government will always be there to support farmers. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, as this Prime Minister raises taxes on food, brings back malnutrition, brings in record-smashing food bank use. The best he can come up with is a bunch of scripted talking points from junior staffers in the PMO. That is outrageous. Canadians are going hungry as Christmas is just around the corner. And a common-sense Conservative bill to take the tax off farmers and food could have helped solve the problem. Why did he manipulate and intimidate senators to keep the tax on the food and make our people go hungry right before Christmas? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we have an opposition leader who is so ideologically opposed to protecting the planet that he's willing to take Parliament hostage and stop Parliament from supporting workers, stop, stop Parliament from supporting families, and stop Parliament from supporting Ukraine as well. The Leader of the Opposition has threatened to ruin the holidays if his ideological demands are not met. Let us be clear, we will keep working for Canadians while the Conservative leader is only fueled by the sound of his own voice and has no real plan for this country. We will never back down from supporting Canadians. The Honourable Member for Ballet Chambly. Mr. Speaker, while people who want to be Prime Minister and try to paralyze the Parliament, there's work to be done. For example, the government appointed man, Madame Catherine Tate as the interim CEO of CBC Radio Canada. Her mandate, fight against disinformation. Mr. Speaker, fighting against disinformation. How? By cutting jobs in French in the regions. Does the PM agree with me that Ms. Tate should explain to Parliament her surprising decision? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as a government, we have always supported CDUC Radio Canada and the services it provides in local communities across our country. One of the first measures that we took as a government was to cancel the Harper cuts to this public broadcaster, support local news and journalists during these tough times. And this is exactly the reason why we established C18. While the leader of the opposition celebrates uh, these Canadians who are facing job cuts. We continue to support local journalists, local information across Canada. We're very open to work with the Bloc on this, as always. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Ballet Chambly. I hope we will not conclude that Liberal cuts are better than those from the Conservative Party. Radio Canada is consulted by more people in Canadian than CBC. Radio Canada generates more publicity, advertising income than CBC. In fact, French Radio Canada subsidizes English services at CBC. Yet Ms. Tape is asking French Radio Canada to accept half of the cuts she's asking for on the back of French and on the back of the regions. 
should the Prime Minister himself not call Ms. Kate to appear before parliamentarians to explain herself? Francophone members at the House of Commons, the Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, like the leader of the Bloc knows very well, will always be here to defend both official languages in Canada, and we will look at the protection of French in particular, including in Quebec. CDUC Radio Canada has an important mandate, and we are concerned by the situation all our media stations are facing with digitalization and online services and attacks from the Conservatives against the media, particularly at CBC Radio Canada, and we'll always be here to defend journalists who are an essential pillar of our democracy. Member for London Fanshawe. Three women in London have been killed by their male partners over the past year, and our women's shelters are doing everything they can, but they just can't keep up. ANOVA's women's shelter had to turn people away 2,400 times this year. This is an epidemic. But what are the Liberals doing? Cutting funding to women's shelters when they need them the most. When will the Prime Minister reverse his $150 million cut to women's shelters? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, today and every day, we reinforce that everyone has the right to live free from violence. We've made historic investments, including unprecedented investments during the pandemic to support shelters, and we're taking real action to end gender-based violence in our communities. We're also working with provinces and territories to develop a national action plan to prevent gender-based violence and support survivors. We know there is an urgent need for more action, and we will not stop until gender-based violence comes to an end. The Honourable Member for Nunavut. Indigenous women and their children are forced to live in violent situations because of the lack of adequate housing. The Liberals are actively keeping Indigenous peoples marginalized by delaying the release of housing investments promised. The NDP fought to secure $4 billion to help build homes Indigenous peoples need. But the Liberals keep delaying these investments, keeping Indigenous peoples out in the cold. When will this government help Indigenous communities get the homes they so desperately need? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are taking action to address housing gaps in Indigenous communities swiftly, effectively and in equal partnership. Budget 2023 included an additional investment of $4 billion in the Indigenous housing strategy on top of the $6.7 billion since 2015. In fact, since 2016, we've supported the construction and renovation of over 30,000 homes in First Nations communities, and we continue to work with First Nations partners to co-develop 10-year housing infrastructure strategy. We will continue working with First Nations, Inuit and Métis along with all levels of government to co-develop and implement community-based housing solutions because they are desperately needed. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. A desperate and panicking Prime Minister spent the weekend calling Liberal Senators, pleading with them to keep the carbon tax on farmers. Our common sense plan will take the tax off of the people who grow the food, ship the food, and as a result, Canadians who buy the food. Yesterday, he got his Christmas wish. Liberal Senators gutted Bill C-234, a move that will keep food prices high while Canadians visit food banks in record numbers. So will he finally listen to the outcry? Will he listen to to anyone but his globetrotting activist environment minister and take the tax off so people can put food on their table this Christmas. The right. The Honourable, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House, well, we'll try the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The only senators that sit in any caucus are Conservative senators, Mr. Speaker. And I would note that up to one third of those Conservative senators did not vote yesterday. Mr. Speaker, climate change is driving food inflation, not pollution pricing. Farmers are on the front lines of climate change. They know about climate change. They experience the effects of droughts, flood, and storms firsthand. And unlike the Conservative Party, they have no problem saying, climate change. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative strategy is to ignore climate change and stay hiding in the pockets of big oil and gas. That is no strategy at all, and it is risky and reckless. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, every single senator who voted against
against this bill was a Liberal senator. The Prime Minister's carbon tax has already ruined Christmas for millions of Canadian families. So Conservatives are going to ruin Christmas vacation for this Prime Minister and his Liberal MPs. We will stay here as long as it takes That's to right. force them to axe the tax so the Canadians can afford gas, groceries and home heating. So, Mr. Speaker, how long are we going to be here? Is it one week? Is it two weeks? Is it three weeks until this Prime Minister finally relents and cancels his carbon tax on farmers, on families and on First Nations? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, unlike the Conservatives who had their senators bully independent senators in the other place, we will stand up to the bullies on the other side. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to stand for Canadians every single day. And we know that when we put a price on pollution with the rebate, Canadians get more back than they pay. If the Conservatives cared about Canadians and their affordability challenges, they would support the price on pollution because it is putting money in their pockets. But typical Conservative style, they take from the poor to give to the rich. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lambton. Well, Mr. Speaker, this weekend it was the Prime Minister that was bullying the Senators, yeah. calling them up and telling them to kill Bill C-234, a common-sense bill to help farmers right. and families. Sing it. And the Senate, you know, they listened to him. They gutted the bill, yeah. OK? But people are suffering. People are hungry. The food bank use in my riding is up over 100 per cent. So will the Prime Minister finally listen to Canadians and take the carbon tax off farmers, First Nations and families? The Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The other place actually found one of the Conservative senators in breach of privilege for the actions that he took bullying independent senators, Mr. Speaker. That member should be cognizant of the fact that independent senators can make their own decisions. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to supporting Canadians, this government has been there the entire time. Whether it was through supporting millions of Canadians through the pandemic, whether it's supporting them through the social safety net that the Conservatives are looking to gut with their cuts, Mr. Speaker, in typical Conservative fashion, they're looking to take from the poor and give to the rich. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lambton. Well, Mr. Speaker, it's this Liberal government that's trying to make everybody poor. But, you know, the Prime Minister, he's determined to ruin Christmas for Canadians. And so Conservatives will ruin his vacation. We will stay here and we will fight until he decides to take the carbon tax off families, farmers and First Nations. Will he do it? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the party opposite continues to spread information that is simply incorrect. When they're talking about the vote in the other place, they should really be asking the Conservative senators who sit in that caucus why they didn't show up to vote yesterday. Mr. Speaker, if they truly cared about it, that would have been the question that they were asking instead of posing this to the government that has nothing to do with the independent Senate. But what we do on this side of the House is we support farmers. We're going to be there for farmers. We're going to be there for all Canadians like we have been since 2015. We're going to keep delivering for them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let's just all take a deep breath. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, everything cost more. And unfortunately, it's not over yet. We know that the bill adopted C234, and even the Greens voted with us. But then it would have given us some. Uh, tax breaks for farmers. But then the Prime Minister took, picked up the phone and personally called senators to make sure that Bill C-234 would be gutted. And unfortunately, it worked. And that's the problem. Why is the Prime Minister always so intent on taking even more money out of families' pockets in Canada? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, I have enormous respect for my colleague, but he knows that the only party that is in this House that is trying to take money from Canadians is the Conservatives. Cancelling the price on pollution will leave most Canadians worse off than they are now. And if they have questions for senators, why did the Conservative senators not vote yesterday? On this side of the House, we respect democratic institutions, 
But we know that's not the case for the Conservatives. Uh, the, deputy... the Honourable Member for Lieu Saint Laurent. I also have a great uh, deal of respect for the Minister, but I'd like her to explain that how come they want to seek even more money from the pockets of Canadians. And that's exactly what they're doing. But we have the solution with Bill C-234, which give, gives Canadian farmers a break. It means that food uh, will not continue to rise like it has under this Liberal government. And yes, again, once again, the Liberals will rely on their senator, senators to attack this bill. When will this government and people understand that it costs a lot to vote for this Liberal government? The, leader the Honourable Government House Leader, it costs expense a lot. That's what it, the Conservatives would do. They would take money from the pockets of Canadians. They're, they voted against an increase in the CCB and an increase in OIS for seniors. They voted against dental benefits for lower-income Canadians. On this side of the House, we understand that we have to be there to support Canadians, and that's something that I would like the Conservative Party understand as well. The Honourable Member for jean Pierre, Mr. Speaker, the number to retain this week is 2,000. 2,000 is the number of meetings the Liberals have held with fossil fuel lobbyists since last year. 2,000 meetings in two years with oil companies. We know that numbers don't lie. And when a Liberal gives you a choice between listening to what he's saying and looking at the numbers, do like me and choose the numbers. Look at the numbers. The li Liberals tell us day after day that they agree. But I have a simple question for them. Do they realize that the numbers suggest that they're leaning towards black oil? The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's important to have meetings with all stakeholders in the economy. Yes, it includes the oil sector, but also environmentalist groups. Two weeks ago, I had a meeting with Environmental Defence, with many green groups, to have conversations that are very important. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. Figures don't lie, Mr. Speaker. 2,000 meetings between the Liberals and fossil fuel lobbyists since last year. The PMO has met with oil companies twice as often as with environmental groups. And on the finance side, it's even four, four times more often. Does this have an impact on policies? Well, let's follow the money trail. The Liberals' flagship environmental measure in Bill C-59 is $30.3 billion in oil company subsidies. When will the Liberals base their policies on the climate crisis rather than the oil companies whining? The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I've already said, it's important for us to hold meetings with participants of all sectors of our economy. And of course, I had many meetings with the Bloc as well. But I'd like to say that we did announce this week new regulations to reduce methane by 75 percent. And it's the first country worldwide that has made this commitment. It's something that's very important to fight climate change, and we are very proud of this. The Honourable Member for Grand Prairie, Mackenzie. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister spent the weekend pressuring Liberal senators, demanding that they kill our Conservative bill that would axe the carbon tax for Canadian farmers. Yesterday, those senators bowed to their political master. They used every dirty trick in the book to gut the bill. Mr. Speaker, the truth is, these Liberals aren't hurting us. They're hurting hungry Canadians who can't afford these higher prices for their food. Why won't the Prime Minister park his ideological admiration for higher taxes for Canadians and give Canadians a Christmas miracle and finally axe the tax for farmers, First Nations and families? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Climate, of Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, there's no Liberal Senators and the Conservative Senators didn't even vote. Mr. Speaker, we already know the Conservatives don't believe in climate change, but it seems like they don't believe in math either. University of Calgary-based economists conducted a thorough review of our price on pollution, and facts are facts, Mr. Speaker. 94% of families who earn less than 
$50,000 receive more back through our price on pollution than they pay. But in cons typical Conservative fashion, Mr. Speaker, the member from Carleton and his merry band of climate change deniers want to steal from the poor and give to the rich. It's risky and reckless, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Grand Prairie Mackenzie. Well, Mr. Speaker, that's the most ridiculous answer I've heard in this House today. There's only one group in this House that's trying to take away from those that are most vulnerable. When will these Liberals finally understand that if you tax the Liberals, uh, pardon me, if you tax the farmers that grow the food and the truckers that ship the food, it's eventually going to be cost more for Canadians that's to right. buy the food? Right. When will he set aside his ideological attachment to the carbon tax and finally give a break to farmers, First Nations and Canadian families this yeah. Christmas? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Farmers are on the front lines of the climate crisis. They are the first to feel the effects of floods and droughts. And, Mr. Speaker, wheat yields are down 20% in 2023. Why is that, Mr. Speaker? It's climate change. Yet, unlike these Conservatives, farmers have no problem identifying climate change as the culprit for the reduction in their yields, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. Speaking of wheat, if the Conservatives really want to support food security, then they should support the breadbasket of Europe. Mr. Speaker, that's Ukraine. Ukraine says they need assistance in strengthening economic resilience, yet they voted against the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. I'd urge them to reconsider that shameful vote in third reading. The Honourable Member for Battle River, Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, yesterday, Liberal-appointed senators voted to gut Common Sense Conservative Bill C-234, an action that betrays farmers. For the last decade, this PM has, has repeatedly made the claim that the Senate and those he appoints to it are independent, yet this weekend proved otherwise. He and his Socialist Environment Minister were busy employing a campaign of bullying and pressure to force his senators to kill this needed carbon tax carve-out. The carbon tax is punishing the farmers who produce the food and the folks that need it. Will this Prime Minister finally just listen to Canadians and axe his carbon tax? Hey, hey. The Honourable Minister of Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I think my honourable colleague is well aware the other place makes the decision on their own. We do not... The Conservative Party of Canada has senators in their caucus. The Conservative Party of Canada does not have a policy or a plan for the environment. But I can assure my honourable colleague that we do have a plan for, for the environment, and is that why we're able to make an investment of $1.5 billion to help farmers, protesters reduce their environmental footprint? Mr. Speaker, we have and will continue to support our farmers and ranchers in this country. I just, said, I just want to say, I mean, as I said, the Honourable Minister sits right here. I can barely hear him. So let's try to keep the sound down a little bit. The Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, I know for a fact that farmers are asking that minister to axe the carbon tax. That PM promised that the Senate would be independent, but the actions this past week proved that that is a complete farce. We know he bullied his senators. The PM himself was on the phone over the weekend telling them they had to gut Bill C-234. The Prime Minister lied, and his minions continue to lie about whoa, whoa. same time I did knows full well that you can't use that word. I would say the Honourable Member should retract that and apologize. The Honourable Member Battle River Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, I will not apologize to that Prime Minister when he continues to lie about the impact of the climate tax and the so-called independence of the Senate. I'm asking the Honourable Member to apologize for the second time and retract that word. The Honourable Member knows full well you cannot use that word in this chamber. So this is the last, uh, this is the last opportunity. The Honourable Member of Battle River Crowfoot, will you be retracting that? It's the truth. It's the truth. Mr. I will not apologize to the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Curick, would you mind leaving us today?
So let me fill, let me fill this. I have to name you for the disregarding the authority of the chair. Pursuant to the authority granted by me, standing order 11, I order you to withdraw from the house from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this sitting day. But he did uh, he did leave. I'm just gonna take a bit of a break here. The Honourable Member for Port Moody Coquitlam. Mr. Speaker, in Canada, over half of women with disabilities are living on less than $10,000 a year. They can't afford the medication they need, nutritious food, or housing. And for women with disabilities who are facing intimate partner violence, they can't afford to get away or to move out of their homes. The Liberals have failed these women. Will the Prime Minister stop endangering women with disabilities by releasing the Canada Disability Benefit now? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Honourable Member for that really important question. That, Mr. Speaker, it also gives me a chance to first and foremost acknowledge that this past Sunday was International Day for Persons with Disabilities, an opportunity for all of us to continue to do the hard work to create a barrier-free Canada and to ensure that we create equal opportunities for persons with disabilities. Mr. Speaker, on Canada Disability Benefit, the Honourable Member knows very well we are absolutely committed to getting it right and getting it out quickly as possible, but in the true spirit of nothing without us. Mr. Speaker, online public consultations who are fully accessible are available online for regulations, and I hope that all Canadians will participate. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, this weekend violence between Israel and Hamas resumed. More Palestinian children and humanitarian workers have been killed in Netanyahu's bombardment, and there are still many people being held hostage by Hamas. Doctors Without Borders convoys in Gaza were attacked and destroyed, and aid trucks have been blocked. This is not eliminating Hamas. This is destroying an entire population. And yet the Liberals and the Conservatives refuse to call for a ceasefire. Okay. Why is the government's position so cowardly in the face of this humanitarian disaster? The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs. We unequivocally condemn the terrorist attacks that happened on October 7 against innocent Israeli civilians. As we, of course, think that it is completely unacceptable that so many women and children, civilians in Gaza, have been have died during uh, the, 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 the context of this crisis. The cycle of violence will not ensure Israel's long-term security, and the price of justice cannot be the suffering of all Palestinian people. The violence must stop. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Humber River Black Creek. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we remember the 14 young women who were killed during the Ecole Polytechnic massacre. As the 16 days of activism to end gender-based violence comes to an end, we are reminded that our work must continue until we achieve a Canada free of gender-based violence. Can the Minister of Women and Gender Equality and Youth update the House on how our government is addressing the prevention of gender-based violence? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honourable Member for her question, and today we remember the victims of the massacre at Ecole Polytechnique. The brazen disregard of the safety of women and the clear intent to harm them casts a shadow on our hearts to this day. And even now, gender-based violence remains a real threat for women. Because of this, our commitment to end it has not changed. That's why we have signed 10 agreements alongside provinces and territories through the National Action Plan to end gender-based violence. And this work will not stop, Mr. Speaker, until it ends. The Honourable Member for Regina, Wascana. Mr. Speaker, today Canadians across the country are feeling betrayed. 
betrayed by this Prime Minister's senators who voted to gut Conservative Bill C-234, a bill that would have provided carbon tax relief for Canadian farmers and for Canadian families who are just trying to put food on the table. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, will this Prime Minister end his carbon tax obsession and provide relief for Canadians so they can stop turning to food banks? The Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the member opposite knows, there are no senators on this side of the House. The only senators that are in a political party are those that are Conservative. Perhaps the member opposite would like to ask why 13 Conservative senators didn't show up to vote. Is it perhaps because they don't support the leader's position on Ukraine and recognize that if they truly cared about making food more affordable, they might actually support the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement? But the questions he has to ask are to the Conservative senators who didn't vote for their bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Peace River Westlaw. Mr. Speaker, the minister can say whatever she wants, but when the minister is phoning his liberal appointed senators and instructing them how to gut the bill, it's pretty hard to believe them. Common sense conservatives will axe the tax, removing the carbon tax from Canadian farmers, making food cheaper for all Canadians. The prime minister continues to stand in the way of Canadian farmers and punish them with this carbon tax. When will the prime minister set aside his ideological opposition to the carbon tax and remove it for all farmers, families, and First Nations? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, but once again, that member knows full well, and although he's not sharing it with Canadians, that the only senators that sit in a political party are Conservative senators, and they didn't show up to vote yesterday. So he should really ask why they didn't do that. Perhaps they have an issue with some of the positions that his leader has taken. So if he cares about the high cost of living, if he cares about food prices, then he should simply change his vote on the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement because that is causing well, the most significant inflation when it comes to food prices, as is climate change. And so he should check his ideological opposition to fighting climate change. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Bose. Mr. Speaker, this desperate, panicking Prime Minister spent his weekend calling senators, begging them to kill Bill C-234. And yesterday, unsurprisingly, the Senate voted for an amendment that would empty Bill C-234 of all substance. That would keep food at an exorbitant price. At a time when Canadians are struggling, will this Prime Minister finally stop trying to radically increase the carbon tax on farmers and families? Finally. They sold. The Honourable Minister of Transport, where was this member when there were forest fires and floods this summer, when people had to leave their homes? Where was he when it came time to see the impact of climate change on people, on farmers? And where was he this morning? Because this morning I was at the Liberal caucus and there were no senators, whereas he was at his caucus where there are plenty of senators, so he should tell the truth. Well, I just asked someone to leave because of the use of the word truth. It's almost the same thing here, talking about truth or lies, so I would ask the member to be careful. The Honourable Member for Bose. Well, I'm connected with what's happening on the ground. My con colleague may not be aware of this. There are direct impacts on farmers, including in Quebec, because the propane we use in Quebec comes from outside, so we pay for it. So, Mr. Speaker, we will not we will not allow the economic statement from last week to pass. In fact, the government hasn't even tried to bring it to the floor for debate. And agriculture is not even in the bill. The word agriculture is not even there. With record levels at our food banks, won't this government help food prices to go down? So I repeat my question. I hope my colleague will answer it this time. When will the prime minister finally give up his idea of radically increasing the carbon tax? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let's say things very clearly. Pricing pollution reduces pollution and puts more money into the pockets of 8 out of 10 families. Now, 
in terms of the number of families in Bose receiving the child care benefit, well, it's nine out of ten families in that riding. They're receiving the child care, the child, the Canada child benefit, and yet. The Conservative leader voted against the Canada Child Benefit. He voted against the interests of 9,000 families in Beauce. The Honourable Member for Rivière des Milles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We now know that it was the Prime Minister who interfered with the public competition for the Afghanistan, the Afghanistan Mission Monument. And we know that he's the one who strategized to reverse the jury's decision and make sure that the Quebec team the Dao team would lose. Yesterday, the House of Commons, uh, the House of Commons spoke, led by the Bloc Québécois. The House condemned the government's 180 and the fact that it's not respecting its own rules. Will the Prime Minister listen to the House and reverse his decision to push aside the winning team, the Quebec team? The Honourable Minister for Veterans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let's be very clear. The Department of Veterans Affairs decided to do this because we chose to listen to veterans. More than 12,000 veterans, more than 12,000 Canadians filled out a survey and poll, and most of them were veterans, and they clearly said that the Stimson concept better represented veteran sacrifice and valor. That's why that decision was taken, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, these Liberals deliberately rejected Quebec. There was a competition in the case of the monument. Quebec won, and yet the Prime Minister decided to topple that decision. So Quebec was pushed aside. Now, in the Boeing against Bombardier file, the Liberals didn't even leave it to chance. They didn't even offer a bid for tender. So there was no chance for Quebec to win. But the result was the same in both cases. In both cases, the Liberals strategized to push aside Quebec and make it lose a federal contract. Why? The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Let's be very clear, Mr. Speaker. The Department of Veterans Affairs ultimately chose the Stimson's concept. We listened to veterans. We created a survey Thousands of Canadians answered the survey. Most of them were veterans. Mr. Speaker, I just don't understand why my honourable colleague doesn't want to listen to veterans. Because once again, once again, there's the one who made the ultimate sacrifice in the Afghanistan mission. Honourable member for Calgary Rocky Ridge. Well, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, Canadians know the Prime Minister is not worth the cost. He spent the weekend making desperate and panic-stricken phone calls to senators, pleading with them to kill Bill C-234. And yesterday, that's exactly what they did when they voted to gut the bill and keep food prices high for struggling Canadians. When will the Prime Minister listen to Canadians, take the carbon tax off farmers, First Nations, and families that just want to heat their homes? Here, here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We don't need Conservatives to tell us how to help farmers, Mr. Speaker. Farmers are the most impacted by climate change. The last season was one of the worst, with 20% lower uh, wheat yields in the prairies, Mr. Speaker, and the culprit was a hotter uh, season. That's climate change, Mr. Speaker. Now, we already know that Conservatives don't believe in climate change, but it seems like they don't believe in math either, Mr. Speaker. 94% of families that earn less than $50,000 a year receive more back from the price on pollution than they spend. But it's typical. It's an old story, Mr. Speaker. These Conservatives just want to steal from the poor and give to the rich, with the, yeah. with the leader from Carleton and his merry climate change deniers. The Honourable Member for Simcoe Gray. Mr. Speaker, Liberal-appointed Senators voted yesterday to keep the carbon tax pain on Canadian families and once again betray farmers by gutting Bill C-234. Unbelievable. With food bank usages at a record high, the Prime Minister should have the courage to explain why he instructed Senators to keep food prices high for struggling Canadians. That's right. After eight years, this NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister listen to Canadians and take the carbon tax off farmers, First Nations, and families that are struggling to get by? Axe attack! Oh.
The Honorable Minister of Agriculture. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And being a farmer and meeting farmers right across the country, one of the first questions they ask me, how come the Conservative Party of Canada does not have a plan to deal with the environment? When you look at all the fires, all the floods, all the destruction that's taken place, but I told them we do have a plan, we do have a plan, and an example of that plan is that with the Minister of Agriculture from Ontario, we're able to announce a $25 million program in order to make sure that farmers remain on the cutting edge, that farmers are able to, be, to produce crops that are strong, in areas that are uh, more moisture, and we, uh, as I said, Mr. Speaker, The Honourable Member for Edmonton West. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. It's clear that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Yesterday, the Prime Minister's hand-picked senators voted to keep the carbon tax on farmers and keep food costs high. Shameful. In Edmonton, the Veterans Food Bank is pleading for donations to help our veterans, and that is the legacy of this Prime Minister. Food banks are veterans begging for help. When will the Prime Minister listen to Canadians and take the carbon tax off farmers, First Nations and families who are just desperate to heat their homes? The Honourable Minister of Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, as I said previously, being a farmer and talking to farmers, they cannot understand how a Conservative Party of Canada would not have a plan to deal with the environment. When you deal with it's situations like Fiona in Atlantic Canada, totally destroying properties, destroying dairy barns, killing animals. In fact, that's part of the cost to, uh, uh, for the price on food. Mr. Speaker, we have and will continue to support farmers for an example dealing with Minister Thompson in Ontario. We announced $25 million to make sure farmers stay on the cutting edge. We have and will continue to support farmers. The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, too often people in Waterloo Region and across Canada lose loved ones to overdoses caused by the increasingly toxic illegal drug supply. People who are struggling needs all level of government to work together in a comprehensive and evidence-based substance use policy. We know that stigma and fear won't solve this crisis. Can the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions inform Canadians on the harm caused by stigmatizing the toxic drug and overdose crisis? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. I want to thank the member for his question. Mr. Speaker, common sense without science means loved ones lost. Raising stigma is killing people who need our help. I was shocked to learn that Conservatives kept interrupting experts at Health Committee. If the overdose crisis was truly a priority, they would listen to experts and follow the facts. Our evidence-based plan includes prevention, harm reduction, treatment and law enforcement. We're not pitting one pillar against another, Mr. Speaker. We're using all the tools needed to save lives. Reckless and risky games stoke fear. We need to work together and fight this crisis to save lives. The Honourable Member for Moose Jaw, Lake Centre, Lanigan. Mr. Speaker, a desperate, panicked Prime Minister spent this past weekend calling senators pleading to kill C-234. Yesterday, his NDP Liberal government got their wish when the senators betrayed farmers, gutting this important bill, keeping the carbon tax. This keeps food prices high and farmers struggling. Farmers across Canada buy goods they need retail and sell what they produce wholesale. Mr. Speaker, after eight long years, farmers know this Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. If he won't help our farmers, when will he get out of the way so a Conservative government can? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, when I hear from everyday Canadians about affordability, when I hear from people like Lindsay in my riding, when I hear from former classmates like Stephanie, what they say to me is that the cost of food is going up, but they understand it's a complex problem. Climate change feeds into the cost of food. Things like instability overseas in Europe and an illegal war in Ukraine affect the price of food. Ergo, we just wonder about the sincerity of the party opposite when they vote against instrumental measures like affordability piece of legislation or legislation that will assist Ukraine and stop that illegal war. 
The Honourable Member for Medicine Hat, Cardston Warner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you eat today, thank a farmer. If you couldn't afford to eat today, thank these Liberals. Right. Our farmers spent their days working hard to ensure that Canadians have enough food. The NDP Liberal government spends their days developing new ways to tax Canadians and drive up costs. The Conservatives proposed Bill C-234 to take the carbon tax off farmers. But this piece of work, Prime Minister, has pressured his appointed senators to block this bill. After eight years, will the Prime Minister finally get his hands out of the pockets of farmers, no. families and First Nations and axe the carbon tax? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think it's time that the Conservative Party stopped misleading Canadians with respect to these issues. I certainly would invite them to read the article that the University of Calgary economist Trevor Toome put out last uh, yesterday, which basically showed that 95% of Canadians on low and moderate incomes get more money back. Rather than talking about axe the tax, they should be talking about axe the rebate and taking money out of the pockets of hard-working Canadians. Well, I got a few more to go, folks. The Honourable Member for Montmagny, Lilette, Kamouraska. The Honourable Member for Montmagny, Lilette, Kamouraska, Rivière du Loup. Mr. Speaker, farmers wanted a break on the carbon tax, but unfortunately, the Senate voted for an amendment that empties Bill C-234 of all substance. Food prices will remain very high at a time when Canadians are struggling. And we certainly can't count on the costly Bloc Liberal Coalition to help them. Will the Prime Minister finally abandon his plan to increase the carbon tax on farmers and families? They just can't take it anymore, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, I'm trying to understand... I'm trying to understand the Conservatives' obsession with undermining the fight against climate change. I just don't understand. And they don't even seem to recognize the existence of climate change, and they're doing everything to avoid doing something about it. Earlier, they were asking us to speak with our senators, and they asked us to stop speaking with them. We don't even have any senators. They have plenty of senators. They should talk to their senators. Their senators didn't even show up to vote. They should fix their own problem. The Sudbury. The Honorable Member for Sudbury. Mr. Speaker, today we remember the 14 young women who were killed during the École Polytechnique massacre. We must continue to work hard to end gender-based violence in Canada. Could the Minister for Women and Gender Equality update the House on the work our government is doing to ensure that a senseless massacre like this never happens again? The Honourable Minister. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for her question. Mr. Speaker, today we are taking time to remember the mothers, sisters, daughters from throughout the country who have been taken from us due to this senseless and avoidable violence. Gender-based violence must and shall not be tolerated in Canada. Our government will fight to end gender-based violence. We need firearms control legislation and a national action plan to end gender-based violence. The Honourable Member for Churchill, Kiwadinokaski. Mr. Speaker, this past summer was the worst wildfire season in Canada's history. Indigenous communities are on the front lines of the climate crisis and are disproportionately paying the price. Yet Liberals are investing less than a third of all emergency preparedness money in, pre in prevention choosing to be reactive. First Nations, like Bloodvein, that's been evacuated because of wildfires, does not have a fire truck to this day. The AFN is asking for $30 billion in mitigation. The Liberal spending on mitigation is a drop in the bucket. Why are the Liberals pretending this reality is acceptable for First Nations and Indigenous communities facing the climate crisis? The Honourable Minister. 
dealing with significant wildfire uh, season because of, of climate change. And it's impacting the most vulnerable, especially when it comes to our indigenous uh, communities. I've traveled, every time I've gone to visit the disaster affected areas, I do meet with the indigenous communities. One of the things that we are really looking at is making sure that we use their knowledge in terms of the mitigation and making sure that we have the pro appropriate response for us. We are going to get this right, Mr. Speaker, for making sure that the indigenous have the support to actually support us in the wildfire response. Thank you. And the Honourable Member for Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, Sudanese, uh, uh, Sudanese Canadians have been advocating since April for this government's definition of immediate family uh, member to include siblings, parents and grandparents amidst escalating violence and reports of ethnic cleansing in Sudan. Now, Canadians with family in Gaza are living this same horror. While I appreciate the minister has rightfully admitted at committee that the definition probably should be expanded, nothing has yet changed. When will the minister fix this definition so that Sudanese and Palestinian uh, uh, Canadians can bring their family to safety? The Honourable Minister of Immigration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I can't stress more to members of the House how difficult it is actually to get people out of Gaza in a war zone faced with a humanitarian disaster. Our priority remains permanent residents and Canadian families. Uh, we are looking at options to expand that to make sure that people connected to Canada can be afforded a safe haven. But again, this is work in progress and it is extremely difficult to get people out at this time, but we will continue to work hard to do so. Thank you. Here, here. And that's all the time for question period we have today. We do have an introduction. I wish to draw the attention of the members of the, in the presence of the gallery of the Honourable Nils Clark, Minister of Highways, Public Works and Minister of Environment of the Yukon. <laughs> Moment of silence. Following discussions among representatives of all parties in the House, I understand there is an agreement to observe a moment of silence. I would now invite the House to rise and observe a minute of silence in memory of the victims of the tragic event that happened 34 years ago at Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal.